Hi, today I'm going to show you how to do a Web3 authentication on the XRPL. So to do that, we're going to use Gemwallet along all the tutorial. If you have any question, feel free to add a comment to the video or ask it in our Discord. The Gemwallet Discord link is in the description of the video as well. So first of all, we are going to ask ourselves what is Web3 in one slide. So this is a very high level view. We are really focusing on the authentication. So obviously I'm not going to discuss all the new features of the Web3. First of all, we need to understand what was authentication on Web1. To do this, we had two input fields. One was for the username and the second one was for the password. As soon as you entered your username and your password, you had to click on the connect button. And if your username and password were matching, well, you are just signing to the website. On Web2, it was the era of the social medias, so you were just clicking on the sign-in button with your favorite Web2 provider, like Google, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. And after clicking on this button, you had a pop-up opening, and you just had to agree on sharing your data to whatever website you wanted to sign in. Now, on the Web3, what interests us today, uh, you are going to connect with your wallet on your browser. So it means that you're going to have a connect wallet button and then sign a transaction with your wallet and that's it, you're signing. You don't need to share your name, surname or whatever. You just need to share your public address over there. So we're going to dig into it in a second. I'm going to show you the demo, like how it works with Gemwallet on the XRP ledger. And then we're going to go into the code. Let's go to the demo now. All right. So in this demo, we have a login button, login with Gemwallet. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to type my Gemwallet password and unlock Gemwallet. Now we are asked to share our public key. So what's going to happen? It tells us like the Web3 starter website. Uh, so this website is correct. At this URL wants to have the following authorization. One is to view our public key. And the second one is to view our address. If we agree with that, we're going to share it, else we're going to reject it. Let's go ahead and share it. As soon as I share it, the website gets our address, which is right here, and our public key. Then, if we want to prove our identity to the website and do some restrictive action, for example, changing our username in the website, um, we are going to be asked to sign a transaction to prove that we actually own the address. So let's click on restricted action. Now I'm going to type my gem wallet password again. Unlock it. And now what we are asked is to sign a transaction. Signing a transaction on the website is not going to the blockchain. And so what happened is that this is going to cost you nothing. It's totally free for the end user to sign a transaction. So it's telling us that we are signing this message. I'm going to explain later on how this message is generated and how we do all of that in the background. Let's sign it. All right. And here we go. We are in. So basically, we just got a JWT token from the backend because we just proved that the address we gave at first is matching with the signature we have just sent to the website. Here, we just proved our identity and we're the owner of this address. All right, so now let's dig into the code. Basically, in this repository, we have a readme. You can have a read at it. Um, it's just explaining the process to authenticate. I hope all of this is clear. If not, feel free to raise an issue to this repo or you can just ask in the comment of this YouTube video. I'm gonna answer as soon as I can. Okay, so in this HTML file, we can see that we are using the Gemwallet API. I would recommend you to use the CDN version to get the last one. Then we can see our login with Gemwallet button, which is attached to the connect function. And we can see our other button, restricted action, which is attached to the function restricted action. All right, let's go to JavaScript. This is where all the magic is happening. So what do we do? When the user click login with the wallet, we are calling this connect function. And what we do is first of all, checking if the gem wallet API is connected. This is basically checking if your gem wallet extension is actually installed to your browser. If it is, we are gonna move on to the next action. And what we do here, we're getting the public key. So the public key is actually returning two strings, the address of the wallet and the public key of the wallet. 
what we do then when we get the response we are actually displaying the address to the user to say welcome address and we are storing the public key in this variable right here then our user is going to click on the restricted action and what we do here is get the access token so the jwt token for doing that i created a function called authenticate right here which is taking the public key as a parameter and what we do here is getting a nonce from the back end to get a unique nonce basically we are passing our public key to know who is requesting the nonce and the backend is gonna return us a nonce token which is basically a jwt token that we are seeing right here in the nonce endpoint which is only a nonce so uuid v4 and a public key so just a unique id and the public key we have passed this nonce is expiring 60 seconds you can put what you want it doesn't matter so after that, what we're gonna do is to sign the message. So the message we're gonna sign is actually this JWT token that backend send us. And then the user is asked to sign a message. So we do that in order to prove that the address we have provided before uh, assigned to this public key is actually ours. So to prove that an address is ours, signing a message is enough because then we can check if the same message match with the public key. So then we are signing this message, we store it, and we are sending this message, so this signature, to a verify endpoint. So if I go back to my verify endpoint, what we can see here is that we're getting the public key and the address from the JWT token. This is thanks to our top token. And then when backend is able to take the JWT token and the address, we are using the signature which was provided to the backend as well as the public key and the token in order to verify with the ripple key pair if this signature and this message are actually matching the public key if this is correct so it means we just verified that you own the address well we are going to send back a jwt token which is fired in one day with the correct address and this JWT token is basically the JWT token you're gonna use in your front end to authenticate your user. And that's pretty much it. At this moment, you just created a full Web3 authentication on the XRPL. So if you guys have any question or recommendation, again, feel free to join the Discord. More and more is gonna happen over there. And as well, add a comment in the video if you want to pass a feedback or just drop us a message on Twitter. Thank you so much and see you soon for the release of Gem Wallet on the Chrome Store.